Hello and welcome into the Emergent Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We have an awesome episode planned for you. We're diving into the world of Blazor versus JavaScript. We're going to be talking about which use cases are better for Blazor, which ones are JavaScript specific, which scenarios you should look for in order to know which one to choose. And to break that all down for us, we have an awesome guest in today, uh, Aaron Varga. He has been working in this industry for 20 years. He's a Microsoft guru. He lives in Pittsburgh. And uh, one of the coolest things he told me about is that he's actually been a remote employee since 2009. He uh, was doing remote way before it was cool. So welcome in, Aaron. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. So Tell us a little bit about yourself. What made you want to join, you know, the illustrious software engineering <laughs> field? Yeah, I know. Well, I've always been kind of a computer geek, um, you know, very interested in computers and how they work and gaming and software and things like that. And, um, you know, I was given opportunities where I went to school to, you know, to intern and help with some of the school software there. And that's kind of where I got my start. Uh, but my first real career position was a Microsoft consultant in Pittsburgh for a smaller consulting company. It actually reminds me of a lot of Emergent. Um, spent some time there working with clients. Eventually we got bought out by Dell uh, and they didn't have a corporate headquarters nearby. So, you know, like you said, I've been a remote employee since 2009. And then from there, you know, spent some time doing the whole consultant thing at Dell, worked on a longer term project, um, you know, built some larger websites for, SaaS customers, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, eventually got out of that, went to a smaller consulting firm, and then eventually to Emergent. Cool. So do you, there's a lot of opinions on engineers when they're in-house or on the client side of things. I think you've been working for clients for what, over 15 years? Do you, mm -hmm. do you like it? What kind of advantages do you think there are working with clients instead of, you know, working, working in house? I mean, for me personally, what I look for in a career is a lot of growth opportunity and chances to learn new things. You know, I, I have a little bit of experience when I was, you know, at Dell working on a longer term project, which was, which was fine. Um, you know, but the, the technologies were kind of static, you know, there wasn't a lot of opportunity to introduce new tech and learn new things there, which is kind of why I gravitated back towards um, being a consultant because you get new clients all the time, new projects all the time. Um, so there's a lot of growth opportunity and, um, you know, opportunity to stay current with the tech. And that's personally what I enjoy. Cool. In the marketing world, that's the world I come from. That's why people like working at agencies, right? Because mm -hmm. you're almost like forced to grow because your clients always want the latest and greatest. And if you can't deliver that, then they'll go somewhere else. At least that's been mm -hmm. my experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess let's just jump right in. So can you give us a little overview of Blazor and JavaScript? Especially, it's great because we have two very different skill levels here. You've been working with this for a couple of decades, and I am very new to this world. So give us an overview to those who may not know. Uh, sure. <laughs> so JavaScript is kind of the, the OG of web development. Um, it's really the standard scripting language for web browsers. Um, and enables dynamic content and interactivity on web pages. So, uh, you know, you're you're familiar with browsing websites that have animations. You know, responding to things that you do on the page. You know, such as clicking a button or expanding an accordion, things like that. And that's really what JavaScript is has been used for primarily. Um, you know, over the years, you know, different frameworks have been built around JavaScript. You may have heard of React or Angular or Vue or some of the bigger ones nowadays. Um, but it's really gained popularity for building complex web applications over time. It provides developers with the tools uh, to really streamline application development. Blazor um, is kind of the, the new cool kit on the block. Um, it was developed by Microsoft and it's their version of a JavaScript framework. So what it allows, to do, uh, allows you to do is uh, build interactive web applications using .NET, uh, specifically C Sharp instead of JavaScript. So Blazor applications can run, you know, both on the client and on the server, uh, which is a little bit different than traditional JavaScript applications. It offers component-based architecture, you know, similar to other modern web frameworks. You know, I mentioned React and Angular. Um, you know, components are a big part of all of these. But with Blazor, you know, what's, what's nice about that is developers can write code for both client-side and server-side logic using C Sharp, and you can share a lot of that code between the two. You know, there's type safety, and it's very, very familiar for .NET developers. 
you know, so in the past, you know, prior to Blazor, um, you know, at least speaking from my experience, you know, a lot of times there would be backend components that would be responsible for interacting with um, a database or third party providers. And there would be a web application built on top of that that did all of its communication over HTTP uh, with that um, you know, back end. And that, that front end would be built in JavaScript, you know, React or Angular, whatever your flavor of the month is. And there really, really wouldn't be a lot of opportunity for sharing code between the two, just because they're completely different paradigms, different programming languages. Now with Blazor, since everything is in .NET and C Sharp, um, there is a lot of opportunity for code sharing and reuse, which is super, super nice. Cool. Thanks for that overview. I actually feel like I followed it. So thank you. Thanks for, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for dumbing it down. I appreciate it. So how long has Blazor been around? That's a good question. Um, my first project with it was about two years ago, and it was maybe in its first iteration then. I'll put a thumb in the air estimate and say three to four years. So relatively new. Okay, cool. Yeah, that is, that is really new. So what are the typical use cases where you know, you would use Blazor or you wouldn't use Blazor and you'd actually stick with JavaScript. Are there specific scenarios where one is better? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it depends on a few different factors. So one of the, the major benefits um, with Blazor, you know, we can see that with a, with a firm like Emergent where we're specialized in Microsoft technologies or a Microsoft partner is a lot of our employees have skill sets built on the, the Microsoft stack. So programming in .NET is very familiar to our staff. And, you know, a, a lot of .NET developers traditionally have not necessarily been exposed to building front end web applications. You know, their familiarity with .NET maybe not, you know, hasn't translated to React or Angular, and they haven't really had a lot of exposure to building web applications. Well, with Blazor, a lot of those skills that you learned on the back end can be transferable now for Blazor. So all of the same, you know, coding paradigm, syntax, um, .NET packages and libraries that, that you're familiar with, a lot of those can be used on Blazor. So it's a really small learning curve for a lot of the .NET developers. So if your team is primarily made up of .NET developers, you know, focused on the Microsoft stack, um, Blazor is a natural fit for that team. Um, you know, certainly it's still relatively new. Um, you know, there's still infrastructure and libraries being, being built up. So it's not quite as mature and robust as JavaScript. Um, but it's it's gaining a following. There's commitment from Microsoft to keep developing it, um, and it's it's definitely an emerging tech. You know, as to figure out when you would use one over the other, you know, it's it's I guess it, you know if if your team has the skill set on both, it's really um, specific requirements of the project beyond that. So if you you know require extreme front end interactivity, you know, JavaScript is probably where you want to go. Um, there's a lot of ways to add interactivity and dynamic behavior to web pages with JavaScript. Um, you know, very, very responsive user interfaces. Um, and there is a ton of existing support and libraries out there for that. So that's, that's you know, a, a few examples of when you would choose uh, one over the other. Okay, gotcha. And tell me if this is a dumb question, but I'm thinking about something you said a couple of minutes ago about how Blazor is also server side. Mm -hmm. So JavaScript, you're saying, is mostly visuals, what users can see on your website, whereas Blazor can actually be used, you know, for your infrastructure. Yeah, I think for the scope of this call, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, I mean, there's certainly, you know, ways you can use JavaScript on the back end with Node and, you know, and other technologies. But for the purposes of this, I think we're going to be talking about front end only technologies. Um, okay. You know, where I, yeah, where I started to mention Blazor being server side or client side is there's actually two different flavors of Blazor. One is WebAssembly, which is abbreviated to WASM, um, or server-side Blazor. And the difference between the two is if you're familiar with frameworks like MVC, uh, Microsoft MVC, the, the HTML is actually rendered, it, it, it's built by the server and sent to the client and then rendered on the client by the browser. Um, the same is true for Blazor server-side. So all of the content is built on the server sent to the client to render. The difference between that and Blazor WebAssembly is the entire WebAssembly application loads in your browser and doesn't have anything to do with the server. You can actually run Blazor WebAssembly without a server. And all of the, the, the logic and interactivity happens within the browser there. Okay, gotcha. Talk to me about introducing Blazor to a team. Is it difficult? Is there a big learning curve? How has Emergent Software done it? 
Well, I think it depends on the, the layout of your team. You know, like I mentioned, Emergent Software is a Microsoft partner. So we have, uh, you know, a lot of employees already experienced and well-versed on the Microsoft stack of technologies, uh, specifically .NET. So if you're familiar with .NET and know how to program in .NET, Blazor is a natural fit for that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm seeing that now on a couple of, of current projects. You know, we had a couple of new hires, had a lot of .NET backend experience, but haven't done much with the front end, haven't touched Blazor, and literally within a day or two, they are productive on Blazor web projects just because of their familiarity with .NET. So it's it's been it's been very beneficial for us as a team. Okay, cool. Do you find one to be more developer friendly, like in terms of productivity, in terms of like, oh, when I use JavaScript, I can finish this project in four hours, but if I use Blazor, same project, I can do it in two. Does, does that kind of comparisons exist? They do, and it, you know, it, I keep coming back to this, but it really depends on the skill set of the developer. You know, so someone who has primarily JavaScript and React experience, for example, um, you know, years of experience working with those technologies, if I were to give them a Blazor project, they would be a lot less productive from the start as, a Blazor developer would be, or a .NET developer, just because the language and the syntax is a little bit different. Um, I mean, the same underlying concepts still apply, you know, communicating with servers and some of the things you can do within a browser and, you know, stuff like that still applies, but the actual syntax and building blocks of the application are different. You know, so if you're a JavaScript developer, JavaScript and React and Angular are gonna be more of a natural fit. If you're a .NET developer, Blazor and .NET's gonna be more of a natural fit for you. I see. Okay. I'm, I think I'm starting to get it that it really depends on what you've learned, what you've spent time dedicating yourself to. And that brings up a question. Let's say someone is just a JavaScript developer, but they want to mm -hmm. learn .NET. They want to dip their toes into Blazor. How would you suggest, like, what's the best way to go about doing that? Uh, well, like learning any new technology, starting with the Hello World app, I suppose, and, you know, or uh, using one of the pre-built templates from Microsoft. Um, and just, you know, finding a use case and, and, and building it out from there. Um, just build it out little by little until you learn all the different caveats and gotchas and things like that that are unique to each language. It makes sense. I feel like I don't really know something yet until I actually do it. So mm -hmm. you might mm -hmm. as well just just dive right in. So talk to me about the performance considerations. What do you think about when you're choosing JavaScript or Blazor for a client? What kind of performance considerations do you take into account? Yeah, so, you know, Blazor is really well suited for enterprise type applications, you know, line of business apps. And JavaScript and React certainly is too. Um, you know, and it, 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 it kind of depends on what flavor of Blazor you're considering. So I mentioned the difference between server-side Blazor, which is all done on the server and sent back to the client versus WebAssembly Blazor, which is essentially an application that's downloaded to the browser and it runs within that browser. So there's a, a few different trade-offs that you have to consider. With WebAssembly, you have to wait for that application to download. You know, depending on the size of the application, it can be a very quick half a second or it can be a full, you know, four or five seconds depending on the size of your application. So that might be a non-starter for certain types of projects. You know, if you're if your project is going to be mobile only and only going to be used primarily outside of a Wi-Fi network on, you know, a slower internet connection, um, you know, that might be a deciding factor where you don't want Blazor WebAssembly downloading to your client because uh, that could take a little extra time. You know, another example is if you're if you have a public facing website that you want a lot of content to be optimized for search engines because that content is not rendered on the server with with Blazor WebAssembly and rendered kind of in real time as you access the page, it's terrible for SEO, you know, but for line of business applications and enterprise applications, Blazor is an excellent choice. But there are, you know, there's trade-offs for either approach. Cool. And kind of what I'm hearing is it really is great to have these two tools because they have different strengths. And when someone comes to Emergent Software and, you know, we talk to them and we ask them what they need and build out a project for them, we're able to use the tools that best fit their needs. Exactly. Yeah. So if, you know, if a customer were to, were to come to us and ask for a public facing website that needs to rank really high on Google, it needs to have, you know, uh, a very, very pretty UI with crazy animations and behaviors 
you know, and it's really about the presentation of the of the application and the speed and the search engine optimization. Blazor would likely not be the best choice for that. But if we had a you know a customer coming to us and just you know essentially wants a data entry application with um, you know forms and data grids and, and different things like that, um, it's not going to be exposed to the internet. Doesn't have to rank high on Google. It's not going to even be indexed. Um, Blazor is likely going to be our suggestion to them just because of the rapid speed of development that our team can deliver. Cool. Thanks for those examples. That that helped me kind of wrap my head around it a little more. So talk to me about the ecosystems surrounding Blazor and JavaScript. How do how do the available libraries, frameworks, and you know third party integrations compare? Yeah, well, that's you know obviously one of the the disadvantages of Blazor. You know because it's so new. Um, you know there's not this long history of community support for it, you know, so there are a bunch of libraries out there, uh, UI component libraries, um, you know, some examples are Mudblazor or Radzen, um, you know, some of your more traditional component developers like DevExpress and Telerik have Blazor components as well. So there, there is community support there, um, but it's not quite like JavaScript that's been around forever, you know, and React and, and Vue that has extremely broad community support. There's component libraries and utilities and all kinds of stuff out there for JavaScript that may not be uh, quite there yet for Blazor. You know, that said, because Blazor is built on .NET, um, you know, you can reuse a lot of the .NET libraries that are out there um, natively in Blazor where you couldn't do that with, with JavaScript. So, um, you know, again, it's going to depend on use case. It's going to depend on familiarity of your developers, specifically what the, the project entails. You know, you, for example, you might find, you know, React components or React libraries out there that meet all of your customers' needs, whereas with Blazor, you may not. Um, so it's going to have to be evaluated on a client by client or project by project basis. Which makes sense. That seems to be, that seems to be the theme of this podcast is there are two different tools and it just depends. <laughs> mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. What about integrations with other technologies? How well do Blazor and JavaScript, you know, integrate? Thinking of things like third-party APIs, databases, backend services. Yeah. Well, I, I guess it depends on what flavor of Blazor you're using. You know, so if you're using Blazor WebAssembly, you're kind of limited to what you can do within the browser. Um, you know, so if you're going to be talking to a database that lives on a database server somewhere, you can't directly communicate with that database from WebAssembly because it's running in your browser. So you have to make HTTP calls to talk to an API, which eventually talks to the database. You know, that's pretty standard. You're going to have to do that with React or any other JavaScript framework as well. Um, however, if your project is a good fit for a Blazor server, um, you know, you could build a, a Blazor server application that does talk directly to the database and skip the API layer altogether. So again, it comes down to use case. Um, but what's nice about Blazor is, you know, it's in the the .NET ecosystem. You know, so all of the libraries and tools that you're used to using with .NET, you can leverage within your Blazor application as well. So you know, integrating with other technologies is always an important priority to think about when developing, you know, anything—a website, a, an app, whatever it is. How well do Blazor and JavaScript integrate with other technologies? Is, is one better than the other? I'm specifically thinking of, you know, databases, third, third party APIs, stuff like that. I wouldn't necessarily say one is better than the other. Um, I think they both can accomplish the same thing. You know, so obviously JavaScript has been out there for a lot longer. There may be existing libraries or wrappers around certain third party integrations that you want to make to make your life as a developer easier that may not exist in Blazor, although I'd be skeptical because Blazor is, you know, part of the .NET ecosystem and, and pretty much everything ex that exists in JavaScript frameworks also exists in .NET. So I think it's six to one, half dozen of the other. You know, as far as integration with databases and third-party APIs, you know, they both can do the same thing. Um, you know, so it's going to come down to the skill set of your developers again. You know, so if you need to communicate with the database, chances are you have a server running an API that communicates with that database. And then what that API does is it exposes what's called endpoints for your uh, web application to communicate to. So your Blazor application would call these endpoints, which is your API, and then your, your API would do all the communication with the database. The, the same is true with JavaScript. It's just the, the tooling 
and the syntax and the language that you use to build all those interactions are going to be proprietary to whatever language you choose, whether it's JavaScript or Blazor. The question I want to ask, but I don't want to feel stupid because I know we've been talking for 20 minutes, right, <laughs> about this is I, I'm sensing a theme of like, they can both do a lot of these things, right? And JavaScript may be better a little bit for some things and Blazor a little bit for the other, but it, it's sounding to me like... Do developers just pick one? It's like, oh, I really like .NET. That's what I'm doing. Like, don't give me JavaScript projects because that's not my specialty. Is that why they're different? Or that's are, there, are there tangible differences between them? You pretty much hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's it's kind of like choosing a car. You know, there's there's different cars out there for different needs. But at the end of the day, they're both cars that get you from point A to point B. Um, you know, Blazor and JavaScript, they're kind of two sides of the same coin. You know, they're both frameworks that allow you to build interactive websites and communicate with the backend API and database. Um, how you do that is a little bit different between the technologies though. You know, so like I mentioned, you know, if you're um, a .NET developer, Blazor is going to be a lot easier for you to pick up because it uses .NET. Whereas JavaScript, it uses JavaScript, React, Angular, they, those are all, you know, JavaScript right. frameworks that that are familiar to JavaScript developers. They both do the same thing. You know, if someone were to say in a very generic fashion, hey, build me a web app that talks to a database. The same exact web app could be built in JavaScript and Blazor, but the, the, the language that you write it with is going to be fundamentally different. Okay, so let's talk about kind of the future of both. I know Blazor is new, right? And I'm sure as a Microsoft developer, maybe you have PTSD from Silverlight. Maybe you learned it. <laughs> Right. Um, sure. So is, yeah. Is Blazor going to be around? I mean, I have no inside knowledge, but from from my perspective, I think it is. You know, we've already gotten a lot more community adoption and support with Blazor than we have with Silverlight. And for those of you know the you young folks on the calls that may not have heard of Silverlight, um, it was kind of Microsoft's attempt at you know building a, a, a an interactive plugin architecture. You know, way back when, um, kind of analogous to Flash, if you've heard of that. Um, you know, Silverlight has since been killed off and deprecated. Um, and now we have Blazor, which is a whole robust framework. So I think I think it's here to stay. And, you know, you can kind of see the proof of that with each iteration of .NET over the past couple of years. Um, there's been significant investment and enhancements with Blazor for each of those iterations. So I think it's here to stay. Um, you know, as far as the future, um, I think it's pretty bright. You know, it, you know, I had mentioned a couple of times already about the differences between server-side Blazor and WebAssembly. Um, you know, with the recent release of .NET 8, they're kind of bridging the gap between the two. So you can have server-side code, you can have WebAssembly code, and you can have components that um, use both, actually. You know, so there's a lot of opportunity for both paradigms in, in one project. Um, you know, and from everything that I've seen and read, they're continuing to make investments in it. So I think it'll be here for the long haul. Cool. That's that's definitely good to hear. I'm sure, especially those who are, are learning it. So let's say I'm in college and I am want to get into development, want to get into software engineering, and I have a fork in the road. I'm going to decide between JavaScript or .NET and make that my specialty. Would you recommend one of, one over the other? Are job prospects better with one framework than the other? What uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, my opinion is going to be a little bit biased just because I've been a Microsoft developer for the majority of my career. Um, so personally, I prefer Microsoft and the the whole ecosystem around .NET. I personally think that I can build a website faster with the .NET ecosystem and framework in you know Blazor, for example, than I can with JavaScript. But that's just my background. Um, you know, like I said, Blazor is relatively new. Um, you know, even .NET as a whole is even newer than JavaScript. So, you know, since JavaScript's been around for a while and there is pretty broad support for it and community adoption, you know, specifically React and Angular in, in recent years, um, I think there's going to be a lot more job opportunities today for, for React developers or, you know, Angular developers versus Blazor. Um, you know, that said, it's, it's either there's still a lot of opportunity for, for Blazor out there. Um, it's just not quite as mature yet. It just has to be out there in the wild for a little bit longer. Right. And, you know, sometimes jumping on something when it's kind of new 
can provide a lot of opportunities later when it starts to blow up and, you know, not as many people know it. So maybe that skill set would be in high demand. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't think either needs to be focused on in a vacuum. You know, I think if you want to be a good front end developer, you know, Blazor is a, is a good start to that, but I would still learn JavaScript and, you know, some of the ins and outs with those technologies too, because it's going to make you more of a well-rounded developer and just kind of let you understand some of the, the things that happen under the covers. You know, Blazor abstracts a lot of that away from you. Um, but it's still beneficial to know, especially if you want to advance in the in the career. Cool. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me today about this question before we wrap it up. Do you have any word of words of wisdom for current software engineers, for people wanting to get in the field? Any you've been doing this quite a while. I feel like 20 years is almost like the whole time, right? <laughs> um, Some days it feels like it. <laughs> right? You've just been here since Bill Gates, you know, was in britches. So any uh, sage words of wisdom? I, I mean, just do your, your best to stay current with new tech. You know, there's, there's always going to be something new. So I wouldn't, you know, so much get hung up on the latest and greatest tool or framework or, um, you know, anything that's out there. You know, pick something that has pretty decent adoption, um, learn it pretty well. And then once you feel like you have a good handle on it, go learn something else. Cool. I feel like that is probably some of the best advice in any career path. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. Well, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, Aaron. We, we really appreciate it. Anytime. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Derek. Of course. Talk to you soon. Bye.